Welcome to my presentation. I am Li Tenglong, a primary six student from Nanhua Primary School. In this presentation, I will share with you about a summary of the challenge, three strategies I use for the competition, how I debug, the conclusion, and my experience. I participated in RCAP Code Space Rescue First Steps Under 12. During my coding, I faced a few problems. Firstly, the robot took too long to find the deposit box when it is fully loaded. Secondly, when the robot goes to the top corners, it will find it difficult to navigate there. I will explain more in detail in the next few slides. In conclusion, there are many mini tasks to be completed in order to make the robot gain more points within a short time. Strategy 1. Make the robot go to the deposit box once it is fully loaded or almost fully loaded. I use the XY coordinates to locate the robot's location and the compass to locate the direction it is facing. For example, if robot is at top right corner, has four objects, and is facing 120 degrees to 140 degrees, it will turn to 270 degrees to the deposit box. However, if robot is behind the green wall and meets all the requirements, it will turn to 270 degrees. Two, but that is not what we want. To fix this, we need to observe the robot. I notice that whenever the robot comes out of the top right corner, it would usually go straight and enter the top middle area. Therefore, I can program the robot to turn only when it enters the top middle area. When I change that, it worked. So here is a flowchart that shows the summary. If robot is in x equals 1, y equals 2, is facing 120 degrees to 150 degrees, and has at least 4 loaded objects, it will turn to 270 degrees. Notice I made the robot's direction 120 degrees to 150 degrees. This is to give the robot a range in its direction. Because every time the code runs, the results might differ. Here's an illustration of how it looks like. When the robot moves into the top middle area, it turns to 270 degrees. And it deposited successfully. Strategy 2. To avoid the top left corner. To me, it is difficult to navigate the robot in the top left corner. So I program the robot to turn to 270 degrees when it enters it, so as to avoid the area. Here is a flowchart that shows the summary. If robot is in x equals 0, y equals 2, it will turn to 270 degrees, avoiding the top left corner. And here is an illustration of how it looks like. When the robot enters the top left corner, it turns to the east, or 270 degrees. Strategy 3. I want the robot to avoid the traps only when it has at least one loaded objects. This saves time as when it avoids trap, it might decrease the chance of getting to the other side of the map. As you can see in the picture, the trap is in the center. If robot avoid trap when it is at the top, it might not get a chance to collect objects at the bottom of the map. Another similar strategy is to deposit when the robot has at least one loaded object. It is safer to use one, so that when you have a few more seconds before the game ends, and the robot has one object, it can still earn a little bit of points when it deposits. I chose 3 because it increases the chance of getting a, an RGB, which means earning extra 90 points. Thus, I want the robot to deposit only when it has 3 objects. Sometimes, the robot does not run some of my code, like picking up objects. I found out that it was due to the amount of statements. I added up to 50 statements, and the robot cannot run all of them many times in a second. 
Thus, I lowered the move forward speed to allow the robot to have more time to run the code. Conclusion The results were better when robot does not waste precious time on searching for deposit, depositing when zero objects are loaded, avoiding traps when zero objects are loaded. If I were asked to solve the same challenge again, I would improve my strategy by including RRGGBB, moving the robot to areas with the specific objects it requires. Although it is difficult, but it is possible. Here is my learning experience. I enjoy coding, especially when it is purposeful in life, like we use it in life and make the world a better place. I have learned how to use logic reasoning to code the robot. I have, I have learned to use my deductive and inductive reasoning to create conclusions by observing the robot's actions. I would like others to know that perseverance and resilience is important in coding. Also, use your imagination. The only limitation is your imagination. Thank you.